All right, hello everyone, my name is Lucy and I am an artist and also a physician. So today's painting, I picked literally four random colors, like I had my colors all, you know, stacked up and just reached for four. And I will show you what I grabbed. So, um, Pearl Chartreuse from Arteza, so if you guys can see that. And then I have Windsor Blue from um, Windsor & Newton, which I will show this to you. And then I grabbed Arteza Crimson Red. So here's this one. And Amsterdam Pearl Violet. It's hard to see but I'll make sure I write all these down for you guys. So these four random colors, and I'm gonna do um, a couple paintings. And so you guys know that I'm used to doing Dutch pours and stuff, but I've done other kind of stuff too. But somebody asked if I can do um, something along the terms of a Dutch pour and a separate, paint, a separate painting with a different technique. And they asked if I can do like a, a flip cup or like a swipe and so I do have some Australian full trial and so what I'll end up doing is probably a swipe using Australian full trial and also do another painting where I'm doing a Dutch pour with these colors to see how they blend together in that fashion. I'm probably going to use um, white as my base and for that I'll be using titanium white by Amsterdam. Now for the Dutch pours I'll be mixing with paint and water. Um, and for the other technique, I'll be using full chalk to make it a little bit thicker. But I really don't want to mix these multiple times. And so what I might end up doing is making the batch first for the swipe, so that way it's thicker. And then, which is gonna include the full trial, the American full trial. And so I'll show you what that looks like over here. So this is the American full trial. There we go. Now for the Australian full trial, when I do mix that, um, I'll make sure to show you that bottle also. So what I'm gonna end up doing is mixing the first batch with that. And then when it's time for the um, Dutch pour, I'm probably gonna water it down by adding some um, water to the mixture to make it a little bit thinner. Um, so this way, this time, um, which happens very, very rarely, my Dutch pour is gonna have some Floetrol mixed into that batch. My four random colors, I don't know how they're going to look like together, but we are going to find that out in this video. Now, when I do mix them, so I just have, you know, plain McDonald's cups for these, the larger kind, because it's gonna be um, a bigger batch of paint that I'll be mixing. And then I have a random, you know, cup here. Uh, usually, the mixture when I make it thicker with with American Full Trial, I do a three to one ratio. What that means is, for every three um, ounces of Full Trial, I do one ounce of paint. But the goal is to make sure that no matter what, we have the same consistency in each cup, because I'm using three different brands: Arteza. Amsterdam and Windsor and Newton and so let's say if I had this color this blue in Amsterdam and also in Arteza different brands so different um you know ratios may be needed and I don't like to use ratios all that much but when doing something else you know a three to one ratio is a nice place to start if this blue becomes thicker than this one here then I can either add more of this or water this down a little bit so that way it matches the consistency overall. So at the end of the day, the biggest takeaway is going to be to make sure the paints are the same consistency levels. A way to test that, you can always blot some paint on here after you mix it and lift it up, allow it to you know, run down to see if they're running down in the same at the same time. Is one faster than the other one? Is one too slow? Because that will show you 
who is thinner and who is thicker. But you want about the same across the board. All right, so I'll be back and we're gonna be mixing these paints. All right, so if your cup doesn't have like any kind of measurements on it, like a poor man's hack will be to use like a stick or something and then you can mark. So this is three, six, nine, as far as three ounces, six ounces, nine ounces, and you can put it against the cup and then make your markings that way. So that way, if I put three of Floetrol, then I mean I'm gonna put in one of paint. If I put in six of Floetrol, that means I'm gonna put in two of paint. If I put in nine of Floetrol, that means I'll put in three ounces worth of paint in here to mix things up. And so this is how you know I make my markings on these cups when they don't have their own measurements attached to it. And so I'll finish this one up. Three, six, and nine. Yeah, again, they're marked. And then this one here, same thing. Three, six, nine on this cup. And then this cup here is next. And then three, six, nine. So marks that way. All right, so then now we can put the full trowel stuff in there. Full trowel is very thick and it has like globs and goob and all this other like crazy stuff in there. And so you wanna make sure that you know you give it a good shake and then you can either use a strainer, you can use the top of a um, pantyhose, right? And then when you pour it, the liquid itself goes in here and all the clumps are left within the penny holes or inside the bottle itself. Or you can use like um, a food strainer or whatever. They have like the flow trial bottle strainers that you can buy as an attachment. So that way you only get the liquid out, but you still wanna shake the bottle. Because if you don't shake it and just go ahead and start pouring things out, it's gonna pour out this clear, semi-clear liquid, um, looking liquid, which is not what you want. You want this to look like almost like milk when you're pouring it out. All right, so I have given my flow trial a nice good shake. Here's my little strainer here. Fits nicely inside this cup here. And I'll probably start off with a six to one mixture. So six to flow trial, I mean six to two. So six of flow trial, two of paint. So that way I have enough for a couple paintings, you know from here. All right, and so screen is in place. There you go. Now again, when you do this, you want it, you know, on a table, but I'm gonna show you guys this real quick as I pour, if I can. Oh, my hands are too little. I'll do this. So y'all can see. There you go. So. Here we are here. I want to make sure I can see my measurements there. And then get my full towel in there. And voila. This way, any globs or goo will stay on top while the rest can drip in here. And so, just so you can see, I'm gonna show you guys this. All right, so, not too bad. Here we are, all right? So, I got these in. I'll put this in the next cup. Because what I want to do is I'm going to show you adding to a paint. All right, so let me get my markings facing me. And by the way, McDonald's does not endorse this video or anything like that. This is just extra cups I have lying around. So 
Here it is. We're starting off with the Windsor and Newton, the Windsor Blue. Squeeze it in while I'm watching my markings. All right, and that will give me two extra. Then I'll take this, move it here, because then later I'm going to be mixing the blue, mixing my chartreuse, my pearl violet, and my crimson red. And so I'm going to do the exact same thing for these colors. Then I'll show you what they look like once mixed. And then go from there. Alright. I wanted to show you guys the thick clumps from the flow trawl that get stuck on the strainer. Because you don't want these globs in your painting. Like they're very thick and nasty. And you do not want these falling inside your painting. And so... Is what it looks like. I'll rinse this off in a minute. Uh, I'm adding my last color to the cup here. For two additional, so a six to two ratio here. And then I'll be mixing these. But before I mix, I'm gonna go clean this off right now. So that way it doesn't get stuck to my strainer. Otherwise, if you wait too long and you let it pile, you can't just peel things off like you can when it comes to paint. So it's best to clean these gadgets up right after you use them so that way you can have them for a very long time. All right, so this is now clean. It's dry. Look at that. See, this will get many, many uses. I've had this for over a year. That's great. All right. So I got my colors and stuff into these, into the flow trial, which I will mix them shortly. But I do want to show you the Australian flow trial. So this is what the Australian flow trial looks like. All right. So this little bottle, and then you see that this is red, right? So red versus American flow trial. It's like this orangey type of color here. There you go. So American full trial, Australian full trial. All right. This is a lot less expensive. It's about 14 bucks or so at Home Depot. This is about maybe like 40, 50 bucks um, online. And I can put the link in the description as to where I got these from. So I'll definitely do that for you guys. Now when I mix this with the um, paint, so I'm probably going to do, I'm trying to debate as far as what color swipe that I'll do this in. I'll either do white or uh, yay, maybe black. I don't know y'all, I don't know. And then, you, you know, I love gold. I love the Deco Art 24K. Um, and I also like golden. And so I'm trying to debate if, in those, if my four random colors, if I'll do silver or if I'll do gold. I may have to do several test paintings to see what I like the best and let you guys judge. Um, so I might do that on smaller canvases and see what happens. All I do know is that the leftover paints, if I scrape any of these paintings, I'll add them to a container. And that will be a base or a color that I use for a different painting, which makes it a custom blend. Just like this is a custom blend from various paintings. This is another custom blend from various paintings. And this is another custom blend from various paintings. And so when I say I have these custom colors created, these are what that, this is what that means. At times I do intentionally create my own 
flavors of colors, but these were just leftover pours that I just put all together and, and see what happens. Uh, just mixing this one. Just want to kind of show you. Don't forget to scrape the sides and the bottom because you don't want to see. See, you can still see this on the bottom. That's still flow trial on the bottom. So you want to make sure that you're getting a good mix of everything. As far as consistency, um, this is what it looks like. It's still fluid. And so with this red, and so who knows, I may not have to add anything extra when I'm going to do a Dutch pour at some point with this red, but who knows? We'll definitely have to, you know, wait and see, scraping the sides, how that turns out. Oh, look, oh Lord, I broke this. Look at this. Look at that. Ah, well. Now, even though this blue looks like a brilliant blue, almost, you see that? Almost like a brilliant blue. This will definitely, look at that, so a brilliant blue. But when it dries, it's gonna dry dark. And so don't forget, so see the color on here versus this, right? So when this dries, it will dry dark. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you're painting is that the colors that you see when you're mixing or when the paint is the painting is wet, sometimes it's not going to be the end result because they dry darker when exposed to the air, right? Now, when you do varnish, if you varnish at some point, but whether you're using um, a varnish or if you're sealing with resin or whatever the case is, some of the colors do pop back as far as they don't they dry matte, but when you sprayed or resin or whatever they get that pop back in but the pop for example won't be as bright as the color that you saw when it was wet what i mean by that is once this dries and it dries to like a dark blue when i varnish i'm not expecting to get this bright blue again it's going to be the dark blue but more enhanced it's going to be enhanced and so what you can do is you can do like a, a test mix some paint you know put a little bit on um a sheet of paper or a canvas let it dry and then once it dries you can see how they dry so that way you know what colors you want to use you'll know how they dry you'll know how things can mix together as well too so that way you have that nice color scheme so that way you don't get your feelings hurt when you were expecting a specific color or a certain color but it dried and you got something darker that you did not want um that's one way to avoid that and so again see that same as the red see that flow all right Now, when I'm feeling how the other ones feel when mixing in the container, this one is a little bit thicker, which is the um, the pearl violet, because Amsterdam. So this one, I'm actually gonna add a little bit of water while I have you guys on. So here's this, not a lot of water at all. So it wasn't much at all. All right, much better. So now I have all of these ready. 
same consistency. I'll do this again, three to one, same deal, but with titanium white. My base will just be titanium white without Australian Floetrol because I don't want the entire thing to start selling up when I do it. I only want where I swipe to do that. And so only my additive, when I use my um, palette knife, will have the Australian Floetrol. And I'm gonna have to clean this one up before I use it. It is dry. I'm just gonna peel this stuff off. All right, so I will mix, mix, and then see you later.